two hard-hitting blue-collar franchises, one of the better rivalries going. The Ravens and Steelers are underway. This is taken just shy of the 10. And a good return as he'll stop just shy of the 30-yard line. start on the ground with Dobbins and he'll hope that this is not a sign of what's in store as he has to fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage so after the run for no gain here's second and ten another run here with Dobbins and he is met quickly in the backfield down he goes folded like a lawn chair they will wind up losing three and now it's third down and not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And this is caught by Watkins. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. Back deep is Gunnar Olszewski. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 20-yard line. Brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. They suspected that it was a power play up the middle coming at them, and boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Pick it. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. That's an excellent job right there on third down. Like any defense, you never want to let them get anything started. And that would have been a first down. Instead, you saw the contact on time, no penalty. And before this drive could get wings, it's fourth down. Oh, the return is Prochet. So a good punt there, but a very strong 14-yard return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Baltimore is set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. See if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. Looking for... And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. We have seen this before. And we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. First and ten, here's Pickett. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Harris running straight ahead. 
And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. Can see this quite a bit on running plays with the guys out wide. A lot of times, though, it doesn't get caught. You're exactly right, because it's away from the play usually. So a lot of it goes undetected, but I know this will surprise you. I took some receivers in the offseason. We work a lot on hand placement and blocking downfield. I want to take that course. Got to get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. And this won't do it. He needed six. He only got halfway there. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three zip lead. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. Hill going to sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. This offense back out and set to go for their next drive. They've shown very little offensively to this point. Well, neither team has, really. And they come up here now first down. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. one incomplete too much contact to hold on to that one and it's third down my first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around and i've seen him pull in balls like this before but how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion to the end as he will finally slide to a halt. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. On the counter now, it's Dobbins. And he is met in his tracks by the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Sometimes I think these defensive tackles get a little bit of a bum rap. We just see them as big guys that eat up blockers for others to make tackles. Oftentimes, they're quicker than they get credit for. And this time, he uses quickness to make a play. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 31-yard line. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. But they get back in the huddle. He's got to he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one yard gain. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 20 yard line. to the short side left and this one goes nowhere losing yardage back at the 22. Devin Bush sprinting behind the line to track down the ball carrier a rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong but now it's second and 12. they'll run this is Gus Edwards and he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. it's a nice pickup of 12 yards and it gives him a first and goal not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for. A really good change of pace back. On first and goal, they'll try the option left. And he is going to lose yardage here. A loss of two there, second down. And not a lot of success to be found there. Oh, you got that right, partner, because if you're trying to make guys miss about 10 yards or so downfield, 
That's a pretty good play. But if you've got to do it in your own backfield, I consider that a problem. That doesn't work too well. On second and goal, here's the option. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. They'll try to run with Dobbins. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. And three yards on the carry there as his defense holds strong and takes it to fourth and goal. So Jackson will head to the Ravens' sideline, and on comes Justin Tucker for the field goal try. Tucker's kick is good, and that will tie us at three. So that kick gives them their first points of the game, CD, and it comes on the third drive, but hopefully for them that's a spark that gets that offense going. Yeah, and I would say if you're the offensive play caller, as you look at your sheet, you're trying to find that part on there that unlocks bigger points. They've struggled with a few drives so far, finally got three out of it. How do you find the end zone? That's what he's searching for now. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's see if they can do better here on this drive. But that's one way you take away a first down as a defender. Make sure you have a little bit of physical play when the ball gets to the receiver. Find a way to jostle it free. They caught him off guard, forced the incompletion. On second and ten, pick it. John, as he tried to pull that one in, couldn't hang on third down. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Pick it, back to throw. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And this is going to be a Steelers first down as he's got this up to the 40-yard line. Surprised at all that they went with a fullback there? Not at all because it harkened back to the days where we watched these games almost in black and white, right? The stocky guy, the strong guy, the powerful guy with leg drive. Give him the football, and even if the blocking isn't perfect, he has the ability to scatter bodies and move people enough to pick up first downs. That's what we just saw right there. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They'll run again with Harris. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Now Pickett will look to pass it. Pickens on the slant. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. They run the play fake. Here's Pickett. Caught along the sideline by Fryermuth. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. Nice gain of eight that time, and it's second and goal. Going with a big fullback, Watt. And that play's not going to get him in as he stopped right at about the line of scrimmage. He tried to break that plane, but couldn't get there, and that's going to leave him now at third and goal. Well, they held him out on 
and second down, and now here's third and goal. They'll try to run with Harris. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. That'll bring up fourth. They had the eight-yard gain on first down, but unable to do much from there. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Boswell's kick is good, and that'll do it for the first quarter of play. 6-3 is our score after one. It's the NFL on EA Sports. So all field goals so far, 6-3 our score as the kick is away. Hill going to think better of bringing this one out, and the drive will start at the 25. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. On second down, here's Jackson. That's caught. It's Demarcus Robinson. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Back-to-back -back nice gains, that one for 14 yards and another first. Again, Jackson will keep it. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. T.J. Watt always a disruptor there to blow that play up. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. A give up the middle to Dobbins. And only a couple there as he'll take this up to the 47. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. T.J. Watt, the all-pro, in there to take him down. And this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground in this first half, but this time they're able to hem him in. And it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket. In this case, you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure match, and maybe even a second wave to make sure if he squirts free, you've got someone to tackle him. Oh, the return is Olszewski. A nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And out will come the offense as they take over. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach is talking to his offensive coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe someday to press it a little bit. This might be the case. Off play action, pick it. He rifles one that's intercepted. And the Ravens are gonna take possession as they've got it at the 42-yard line. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 42. They'll start by running the option to the right. And he's gonna bowl his way forward to the 48. Six yards there on the keeper, it's second down. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained, and in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. And he's taken down at the 50 after a short gain of two. But that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving a running back a crease to run through, and has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. 
They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Here's Jordan Stout now. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball. And it's a fumble. And it's picked up by the Ravens inside the 20. And this is going to be brought back for a Baltimore touchdown. So the defense forces the fumble. They get the Scored a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post game. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This take it in at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys, had your fun? All right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. Meanwhile, Pickett's throw complete there to Johnson. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. On the give, this is Harris. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. Pickett sets up play action. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. The offense on third down tonight, not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and nine. Off the play fake, here's Pickett. He finds his tight end, Gentry. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They hand this off to Harris, and he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front... They won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Pickett will look to throw it here. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. The Pickett finding Johnson there, first down, Steelers. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going, and right now it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. Here's Harris. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. On second down and four. Pick it. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Pickett and the Steelers in need of a big play here. Third and long after the sack. And he will not be able to hang on 
through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Boswell's kick is good, and that gets him back within a single point. It's now 10 to 9. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points due to his leg. And Hill will opt for the touchback. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. From the 27, Jackson buying time to his left. Throw left side complete. That's Andrews. Jackson fighting his tight end Andrews for the Ravens' first down. That is definitely what we call our defense an uh-oh play. And what you mean by that is against Lamar Jackson, when you see him out of the pocket, your first thought is, uh-oh, he's going to try and run it. How do I get to him and get him on the ground? And guess what? That didn't happen, and his receivers took advantage. On first and 10, it's Dobbins. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. To throw is Jackson. He's got his man. It's Andrews. Just a gain of a couple there. And third and eight now. Oh, it's time to give a little credit there to the defense. They played that very well because it was a drag route. And he ran a little shallower than normal as he worked straight across the field. He was hoping he'd get lost behind the defensive line. But once he made the catch, nowhere to turn up field and gain any yardage. And that is incomplete. Oh, he did everything but hold on to it. But a nice play defensively. And now it brings up fourth down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. A good return there, 17 yards. And they will take over first and 10. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, Yeah, right? a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting up field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Open man here is Gentry. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. This is Harris. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Looking to throw, pick it. Quick completion here to Johnson. And he's going to get this down near the 25. Harris. And he'll take this forward for about five as we have come upon the two-minute warning. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Pick it now to throw off the play fake. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Roquan Smith. And the Ravens are going to have it here just past the 25. Second interception for him now here in this first half. And you got to think he's a rookie, Charles. How much does confidence start to become a factor? I think that's a great question because that's what they're going to check on when he gets to the sidelines. The coach is going to check on it. His teammates are going to check on it because when you haven't done it before, it's not something that's part of you. You got to see how you're going to react. Let's see how he bounces back. Yeah, because two interceptions for him in college and a half. I mean, that just didn't happen. Looking to throw again on second down. Jackson trying to get it to Robinson, and it's intercepted. 
Picked up by Minka Fitzpatrick. So consecutive interceptions here early on in this one and maybe setting the tone, Charles, for a game where the defense really takes center stage. And don't you think that both offenses are really catching a bit from their coaching staff about avoiding these turnovers that we've seen early? I think both teams are trying to find an advantage. We know that. Can one of them break away and take control of this game? This will be caught inside the 10. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as he'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. Back to throw, pick it. A quick throw, knocked away, and incomplete. That's a really nice job there by the coverage, understanding that they're in a high-stakes situation. If he doesn't make a play on that ball, there's an excellent chance it ends up either as a touchdown or as a nice gain downfield. On second down, this is Harris. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. Now pick it. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Kyle Hamilton picks it, and the Ravens are going to take possession here at their own 33. Charles, one thing that he referenced to us yesterday was his confidence fitting the ball into any window, but obviously that window was a little too tight, and it was closing in a hurry. And he was talking to us about having anticipation in making those types of throws. Down near the goal line, I don't think you can anticipate it as much as you need to see it open. You've got to be precise with your throws down here in the red zone. That one goes into double coverage, and he gets picked off. Second down and three. Jackson. He finds his man complete. That's Watkins. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On first and 10, it's Jackson forced out to his left. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. His running ability has been an extra dimension of their game plan thus far. For once, though, he doesn't create any magic against the front that's prepared for him to try and take off. And Jackson's so tough to stop. He's got a first down, and he gives himself up there at the end. So a very tight first half. We had to break in a one-point game. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has the look of a game that could very well go down to the wire. Just one point separating these two clubs at the break. The Steelers going to get the football first here, trailing on the scoreboard as we are back underway on EA Sports. And they'll let that one go as it skips through the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now, once again, Kenny Pickett leading his offense out. And he's looking to take much better care of the football here in half two after three first-half interceptions. We don't have to just look strictly at the numbers here. You know what else happens to a team when you turn it over three times like that? It erodes confidence in you. And it erodes confidence in the offense. And now you have the defensive guys looking over and saying, what is going on here? And instead of playing for the team, they're playing angry and mad at their teammates. Here's Pickett. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Call that a very strong gain of 24. They'll run. Here's Harris. And he'll take it down to the 30-yard line. 
84 yards rushing for him now to this point. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? And he rifles one incomplete. Right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion for us there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. And while it didn't work very well on that play, defenders on third and short know it's going to be a quick read. And really, the quarterback's just going to turn around and hand it off. So that way, you're able to diagnose the play and try and get to the point of attack. But when you're dealing with a fullback, it's hard to knock him backwards. Well, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Off play action. Pick it. They'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark it down at the 9. That gain of 15 gets him on the doorstep. First and goal. On the ground, it's Harris. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short gain. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Off the play fake. Pick it. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Mike Tomlin has reached for that red challenge flag, and he'll throw it out there. And we'll get a moment here as they look this one over. Yeah, remember now, the call on the field is what they'll stick with unless they have clear video evidence to the contrary. And I give these officials a lot of credit. Such a tough and demanding job. You and I both know that. Yeah, they make the right call way more often than they get it wrong. So that challenge, not successful there, and that's going to cost him the first of his timeouts. Ball rests on the seven-yard line, third and goal. Harris, and the stop will come inside the five at the four. Give him four yards there, but they're still well short of the goal line. Fourth down now looming. So Pickett is off to the sideline, and Chris Boswell is on for the Steeler field goal try. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Boswell's kick is good, and they take the lead here by two, 12-10. Well, they don't get a touchdown here on the opening drive of the third quarter, but I think maybe you still say mission accomplished as they come away with the lead. No, absolutely. You keep the pressure on, right? You go downfield, get some points up on the board, and hope that you've motivated your defense to take the field and hold that lead. He'll going to sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. And they find themselves down on the scoreboard following the field goal a moment ago. And I think even though they trail in the game now, I would consider that a win for their defense, and that's probably what they're telling the offense when they get to the bench. Hey, the onus is on you guys now. Get back out there and get us the lead back. And this is going to be hauled in by the tight end, Andrews. A good pick up there, 21 yards. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Option play, and they'll hand to Dobbins. The tackle made by Levi Wallace. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Dancing to his left. 
And Jackson going to have the first down as he will get to the ground to avoid the contact. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. Now Jackson taps this forward, jet sweep. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. Here's Jackson to throw. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. Justin Tucker on for the field goal. A 46 yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good. And they take the lead out in front at 13 to 12. So two lead changes already in this third quarter. One side takes the lead with a field goal. The other takes it right back. And I'm starting to get the feel that it's going to be this way all the way to the end. I hope you feel the same way because in this particular game, these two are evenly matched. Let's see how it turns out. And tackled at the 21-yard line. So a net negative there of four yards. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize. Like going to the county fair, you don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. And they work this well upfield across the 45. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. To the air on first down with Pickett. Again, it's Johnson. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 105 yards for him on the ground now on that, his 20th carry of the ball game. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. The throw over the middle, taken in, and all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Harris running straight ahead. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the 9. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks, allow other people to make tackles. And when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. In the early days of the NFL, you could easily blame these drops on maybe some uneven or uncertain lighting in the stadium. Not anymore. The lights are pretty good. Yeah, they're great here at night, but his second drop indeed. Not a good look. And yeah, this will not be enough. On third and five, he only gets three. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. The fullback one, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Derek Watt, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Steelers have taken the lead here in this third quarter.
And this time, not the running back down on the goal line. They feel they need that extra muscle. They go to the fullback, and it pays off. And it's nice when you have a running back who can serve as a decoy, hand it to the fullback, and let him follow the big guys into the end zone. Boswell good with the extra point, and that'll make this a six-point game. A 10-play drive that time, and it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. From his end zone, here comes Justice Hill. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Jackson going to run again, and he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven. Is that one officially a loss of one? Here's Jackson. He finds his man complete. That's Watkins. And he will go out right near the 35-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 34 yards. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. They'll run the option left. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. After the loss, they'll come up second and 13. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Just a loss of a yard there, but it's not going to help. Now they face a third and 14. And they need a crafty play call here. 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing. Here's Jackson on third and long. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. And they run the option here on first and 10. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and 11 now. And now Jackson will look to throw it. Slings it to Anders, and it's complete. The tight end has it. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. Jackson and that's going to be incomplete the coverage too good there the contact popped the ball free and it's fourth down here we go it's Jackson on fourth down and he's got his tight end that's Andrews and the Ravens are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points Now Jackson to the end zone, but it's incomplete. On that snap, he's the hero of his defense after the play he just made. A one-possession game, and his hit kept it exactly that. They go option right on second and goal. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Complete. Oh, he had a defender right 
there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Tucker's kick is good. And that will bring the deficit back down to three. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more clock twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. And now out come the Steelers. Fourth quarter, they cling to a three-point lead after the field goal a moment ago. And it's certainly a very critical drive with still a good chunk of time remaining. And not a whole lot there, maybe a yard to the 27. That's it, that's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain, just keep that clock ticking. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Back to throw, pick it. And this one almost intercepted. Far too loose with the football. Nearly a fourth pick of the ball game. I'm trying to decipher what's going on out there because I don't know if he's just getting bad reads. I don't know if the defense is confusing him. I don't know if he just has, you know, bad info and intel before he snaps the ball. But he's made some pretty bad decisions with the football lately. Yes, yeah, several bad decisions on the interceptions he's thrown. And frankly, that should have been another pick right there. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. It'll be a net of 39. 41-yard punt, two on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. On second down, Jackson. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and 10. Now it's Jackson. And he's going to come up a few yards short of the first. They get him to the ground at the 37. Decent gain on the scramble at six, but now it's fourth. Well, it certainly appears to me that the defensive guys are starting to look a little bit tired, while he still has some fresh legs. Not the biggest gain we've seen on a scramble, but still some positive yardage on a play that initially looked like a sure win for the defense. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. We'll call it a 42-yard punt, three on the return. There is Deontay Johnson as this Steeler offense gets set for this next series. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. 120 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. Again, it's Harris on second down. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. Off play action. Pick it. And that will be incomplete. I can put just a little bit too much heat on that one. When you throw it to the outside, you do have to be careful because you got to keep it away from the defender. But you also have to give your own guy a chance, too. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And he is going to have the Steelers first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. So this offense able to convert on fourth. And now a fresh set of downs here, first and ten. And he'll manage to pick up about four at second down. 
Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. He gets this one to Johnson. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 45-yard line. They run with Harris. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. On second and 11 now. Pick it. Oh, that'll be it. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Looking to throw. Pick it. And that is incomplete. Credit Patrick Queen. He was the man who knocked that ball away. I think it's safe to say he's made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Fourth down now, but he was fortunate on that one not to have another turnover on his ledger. Out route, and he connects with Fryer Muth. And unable to break away. They stop him a few yards shy. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 37. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That would complete to Prochet. So they'll get eight out of that completion, and they'll be left with second and a couple. Jackson, options out left. No, bottled up, fumble. It's out, it's loose. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And he takes it back to the house. A fumble recovery for a Steelers score. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable lead. Extra point put through by Boswell, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. Hill going to think better of bringing this one out, and the drive will start at the 25. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And they have done themselves absolutely no favors to earn a win today in this one, Charles. The turnover woes continue. On that last drive, they had that fumble that led to a touchdown. And Brandon, I would say they have a mission on this drive, and the bottom line is protect the football and just put together something that they can let the last drive go. Yeah, it was a bad play. They gave up points, but that doesn't mean it has to go that way the rest of this ball game. Do what you do best on offense and try and put the ball in the end zone yourself. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, Jackson. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Uh, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. That's into the hands of Prochet. And he is going to have a Ravens first down. It's going to be a gain of 15 on fourth. A shotgun snap and a give to Dobbins. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Throwing is Jackson. Being chased out left. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. So holding on the offense, they go ahead and decline the penalty, and the ball will change hands on the fumble recovery. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs. 
just shy of midfield at the 49. They run straight ahead with Snell, and he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on the play there, second down. Pick it, he'll look to throw it. He's got a man, it's his tight end, that's complete. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. Well, a clear running situation, trying to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they'd shown the ability to run the football, so now you lose your keys as a defense, you dive for the running play, and they hit him over the top. Trying to power it ahead with one. Trying to barrel up in there, but I don't think he got it. They'll be marked inches short, no gain on the play, and that's gonna lead him to fourth down. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. So here we go. On now is the kicker, Chris Boswell. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And he missed it. It's no good. And the lead will hold at 10. Now, Charles, all things considered, I guess that's not a critical miss at this stage, is it? No, but still everything helps when you're trying to finish off a ball game. And you're right, not critical in terms of the scoreboard and the team, but the guy with the golden foot, he knows he's only as good as his last kick. And some space here. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Now Jackson. Targeting Dobbins again, and he's got it again. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. Now the Steelers use the second of their three timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Jackson, and quickly into the hands of Robinson. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Jackson trying to hustle his unit up quickly to the line of scrimmage. Steps away to his left. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. It's been a nice day for him as a passer and as a runner. One of the few mistakes he's made in this ball game. The wrong choice on that one. That one goes incomplete. Throwing, Jackson. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Andrews. And he will have a Ravens first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. Jackson to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a nonstop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Jackson toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Late game situation, things seem to be unraveling just a little bit, and that's when you start forcing the football, mainly out of necessity. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete, nearly picked off. Tucker's kick is good, and this is back down to a seven-point game. So no problems at all on that one. And, and you know there's virtually no win. This is a kicker's dream here tonight. It absolutely is, isn't it? So to me, with no win, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. They had to force the field goal. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, 
the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this fourth quarter. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. They'll keep it on the ground. Warren, and he won't quite make it. He needed six. He got about five. Fourth down. Another carry in the game for the fullback run. And he's not going to get there. Might have even lost a yard. He only needed a yard, but he couldn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. Jackson's throw into the hands of Andrews. And he will get out of bounds. That stops the clock, but two-yard gains definitely not what you're looking for at this juncture. Here's Jackson. He's going to let it fly. Oh, he forces one there. It's a potential dagger as it's intercepted. Picked up by DeMonte Kazin. And the Steelers have just about sewn up this football game. Well, that one was in the air for an agonizingly long time. Uh, just begging to be picked off, wasn't it? It's one thing if you're throwing a ball like that, trying to throw someone open or lead them into an area. But that ball needed to be thrown with a lot more conviction. As a result, it's an easy interception. And the knee is taken for the Steelers out of the victory formation. And now here comes their final timeout as they take it with eight ticks remaining. And they will take a knee here. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you've got to say, C.D., it was the defense who had a big part in the W. Oh, without question, when you force four turnovers, you get to enjoy the spoils of victory, don't you? It's rare that you force four turnovers and lose a ball game. That's almost unheard of. They carried this one home. He talked about celebrating with each other and being in a position where going forward, all you think about is, let's get five next time. They're going to be on the hunt. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Baltimore, good night, everybody. Tonight.
on EA Sports. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals taking on Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. From the banks of the Ohio River, there's a look at what's now known as Paycor Stadium here in Cincinnati. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup between the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals. set to go Evan McPherson to do the honors and we are underway from Cincinnati and he opts to not bring this one out the first drive will start at the 25 out comes the offense for the Bills led by their quarterback at six foot five that's Josh Allen start that he was looking for as he's going to be met and dropped behind the line. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Now Allen. That's caught by his tight end Dawson Knox. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. So just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Here's the punter, Martin, now to kick it away. are for right. <laughs> as, as the returner you know who you're buying dinner for later oh without a doubt because he just took care of you and your team in a big way you know you turn it over there that's a big momentum changer and put your defense in a bad spot meanwhile burrows throw here on target to hurst the gain of eight there on the play and that'll bring up a second down in just a couple A first carry for the former Oklahoma Sooner, Joe Mixon. Well, you hate that defensively. They had him pretty well corralled, but the face mask, that obviously changes things. Yeah, it's a bit frustrating because you feel like you did everything right. You had him stop, but the hand gets up just a little too high, and the natural inclination is to hold on, and that's going to get called every time. Oh, and this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it, and it's second down. Now it's Burrow. Man open, that's Jamar Chase complete. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Jamar Chase, 49 yards. And the Bengals put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stump it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done.
So with the missed PAT in his rearview mirror, he goes back out to kick this one off. From his end zone, Isaiah McKenzie. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. They tried to go with a little play action there, but nobody on the defensive side bit. Yeah, they adjusted in time and in a big way and ultimately got the sack on offense. Sometimes you're running play action just to set up a certain blocking technique. In this case, none of it worked. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. From the gun, it's Allen. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Play action. Now it's Allen. Rolling to his left. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. And he is out of bounds, but not before. He's inside the 30. Allen to throw once more. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. Allen throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Well, they certainly did a nice job there picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. They'll try to run for this with Singletary, and he will have the first down across the 20 to the 19-yard line. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And complete right side to Cook. No gain on the play. And it'll be second down. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. You're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Josh Allen, very athletic at 6'5", showing the versatility, picking up the first on the scramble. Back to throw, Allen. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Singletary is in. Touchdown, Bills. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And they take the lead here at 7-6. to six. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. Taking it about the one. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. 
So remember, Charles, last time they were out here, they right. scored, but they just saw the opposition score, and they're trailing right now, so they're trying to keep pace here. They need a touchdown drive. Well, if you're a fan of offense, you're loving this, but if you're a fan of defense, this is tough to watch, and it's also tough to keep that up when you just watch your opponent march down the field on a scoring drive that lasts into double-digit snaps. You need a score here not just to follow the momentum from your last drive, but put the onus back on your opponent. And that's what they're doing right now, swapping that onus back and forth. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. From the gun on third down is Burrow. That's the tight end, Hurst, with it. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. <laughs> I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Pulling a gain of three on the play, and that'll bring up second down. Play action. It's Burrow. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. So that'll leave Burrow and the Bengals with a third and long after that sack we just saw. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. Got a man, it's Chase, he completes it. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills 43. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 43. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And there on the tackle, Shaq Lawson. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carry before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. Now it's Burrow. He'll air this one out for Boyd. And this will be incomplete. Both players with a shot at it that time, but neither coming away with it. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. That'll go for only 17 yards on the punt. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. And bringing it in, it's Davis. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. Allen now on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Allen going to give this one to Singletary. And he is going to lose yardage here. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Well, that play was over before it even got started. Thanks for nothing, huh? How about that? That sets up a very difficult third down call now. Throwing is Allen on third. Finding Knox there, complete. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. The Bills passing game, getting him down the field. They've got another first down. Now a first carry for the brother of Dalvin. It's James Cook. Tackle made that time by B.J. Hill. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy is nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. Flush to his right. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. That's an early scramble. It can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish it as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. 
and defensively, they're going to giving up a huge play with one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. And Allen will have the first down as he's able to slide to avoid the contact at the end. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Out to the left, he's got his tight end, Knox. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. <laughs> on second and goal, Allen. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Now Allen. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Anytime they think they've got him open beyond the markers, you know they're going to throw it his way. And that's not going to change even after that incompletion was forced. The kick by Bass is good. And they bump the lead up to four now at 10-6. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The Bengals drive about to get going. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. 10-6 the score after one right here on EA Sports. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. The offense on third down tonight, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and four. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. I'll tell you what, these last couple of drives, much better from a defensive perspective. They gave up a touchdown on the opening drive, and then after forcing a punt on their last possession, it looks like they're going to hit the football back again. He's got Hurst, his tight end. And he is going to have the Bengals first down as this defense were a little too loose there. They give up a gain of 19 on fourth down. Well, they picked up the first down. But I'm just going to say, I didn't like it before the ball was snapped. <laughs> and I don't like it now that they picked it up. Think about field position on their own side of the 50. They don't get it. They put their defense in a bad spot. It's just not a decision that pays off very often. It wasn't fourth and a yard. There was there was some meat on that bone. There really was. Fortunate to get it in that situation, but not a call I would make very often. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled them up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. On the ground with a tight end. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. How about that there? No frills, no additives, right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Here we go, here we go. Ah! Burrow will throw. Got a man open, it's Chase. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds. Because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one.
The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They go play action with Burrow. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to about the 19. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. And that hits off the left upright, and it caroms away no good. And that will keep this a four-point game. And no mistaking that sound. It reverberated through the whole stadium. And it's the sound, Brandon, no kicker wants to hear. It looked like he had it on target the whole way, but the upright said, uh-uh. Well, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked by... And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And the Bills are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back, but make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. And down he'll go at the 25. A nickel look now for the Bengals as they try to stop him here on third down. Allen now looks to throw. Works right side into the hands of the tight end, Knox. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And here's Taylor on the return. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Here we go. Burrow going to lead up the Bengals here, first and 10 at the 20. Now back to throw. He's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. It's a gain of 34. How about the first half he's putting together? Well over 100 yards already with that last catch. And to me, they'd be well served to keep looking his way. A number of big plays already in this one. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. From the 41, Burrow. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Tredavious White with a pick. And the Bills will take over here at their own 14-yard line. Singletary to get the drive started. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 15. Second and nine. Allen working the middle here. That's complete to Knox, the tight end. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. And it's second down. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Allen to throw it. And he'll be 
taken down by the Bengal pressure. There for the sack, B.J. Hill. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Allen going to throw. It's Knox, the tight end, making the catch. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. So they'll wind up losing five yards on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. Well, the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Burrow and the Bengals with a first and 10 at the 33-yard line. They're going to look to throw. He's going to rifle one deep left side. A fight for it, and this is caught. What a catch. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Jamar Chase with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Bengals are able to move back in front. What a first half he is compiling here. He's already over 100 yards receiving and now two touchdowns, CD. Brandon, you know I don't like to play the game where you start projecting when you're at a certain point. But let's face it, he's off to a tremendous start. So 200 yards, four touchdowns. I don't think anything's out of the question right now. Going up cover. You've got to double him every snap. Otherwise, he's going to defeat you on almost every play. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. McKenzie will not return this, and it'll be brought out to the 25. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. Trey Hendrickson, the one who gets him on the ground. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. They run the counter with Cook. They're able to avoid him at the 40. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 13 and a Buffalo first down. Working out of the shotgun. Here's Allen. Man open downfield is Diggs. He's got it. Touchdown, Bills. Stephon Diggs. 57 yards. As his guys have now moved out in front. Extra point by Bass. Up and good. And that will make this a four-point game. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. Take it in at the three. And they will wrangle him down a couple of yards shy of the 30. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that. And this is, oh my goodness, he pulled it in one-handed. A big play there for Cincinnati. 51 yards. Sometimes the one-handed catches are unnecessary, but he was trying to ward off the defender with the other, so maybe there that was just a good play. So that tells you that not only do they imagine those types of catches, they actually work on them with defenders jostling them in order to keep their concentration and haul it in. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. Now it's Mixon running right. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out-leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Here we go. Second and five. Mike, Mike, 49. Here we go. 
Burrow on play action. He's got his big tight end. That's Hurst. And the Bengals are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. I know the halftime's approaching, but I don't think he's going to want to take a break. That's his fifth catch. Yeah, they've really been targeting the tight end. They'll give it to Mixon. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. They've been in the red zone three times in this game and have not scored a single point. Can they break through here on second and goal? And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Here's Mixon. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And that hits off the left upright, and it caroms away no good. And that will keep this a four-point game. So first and goal quickly turns into fourth and goal, and then fourth and goal turns in to no points whatsoever. That's a very disappointing sequence of events right there. And I, for one, would not want to be the kicker has to run over to his head coach and explain that one. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. So the shotgun snap to Allen. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. The Bills are going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Now a timeout called for by the defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. To throw, it's Allen. This one caught by Davis. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. On first down, Allen. And this is Cook with the grab. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. He's thrown for over 200 yards already, and his guys have the lead as well. As we get you back to Brandon Godden. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. The Bengals with work to do in this third quarter they'll get the football first as we are back underway taken in at the three and he's up across the 25 and down at the 28 the Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three this offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. 
Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game. And to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 22 yards there, a first down. Mix it up the middle. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body builder's guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. 60 yards rushing for him in the ball game now on 14 carries. Throwing now, Burrow on first down. He's going to have the hook up here to chase. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. And we've seen him have success earlier on with the ball in his hands because he is a get it in space and make a play kind of a receiver. But that time, they closed on him quickly and held him to a short game. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. They go back to the ground now with Mixon. And they'll get to him short of the first down at about the 16. Four yards on the pickup there, but it's going to take him to fourth down. They run for it with Mixon. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. Remember today, they've had issues in the kicking game. Maybe that came into play there. That goes into your analytics. You know how people always talk about should you, shouldn't you, what are the numbers? Well, part of your analytics is knowing your team. And with the issues they've had in the kicking game so far, the better play, keep your offense on the field and go for it. And that's exactly what they did. So the completion good for six yards, and that'll make it second down. A first carry for Samaj P. Ryan, and he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize the strategic football and situation. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Samaj P. Ryan, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Bengals have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. Third down and short, and everything well executed. He not only gets the first down, Charles, he gets the touchdown as well. And you see the defense commit to the run so often in these situations. But there's always that little bit of hesitancy, isn't there, partner? Thinking that they may play action yet. They took advantage of that hesitancy and found their way into the end zone with a running play. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. McKenzie will not return this, and it will be brought out to the 25. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And, Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one-score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense, they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth, almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side, trying to match each other. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Here's Hallett. On the slant, he's got Davis. 
And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Again, they'll throw with Allen. Little pitch and catch to the tight end, Knox. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Throwing now is Allen. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't he? He really does, and I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame, and any time he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Inside handoff to Mixon. And he'll get this to about the 34, a gain of just three. And quickly, they get to the line. On third down, Burrow. Trying to get it to Chase, but it's intercepted. Teron Johnson able to pick it. And the Bills are going to take possession of the football. So after the INT, it's Allen. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. I think a major focus at the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. That one goes for eight yards. That's a nice job there, knowing what his options are. He's out of the pocket to his left. And I thought maybe think about running with this one, but he uses his vision instead, finds his man on the left sideline, and they convert on third down. And meanwhile, Allen's throw going to be caught by McKenzie. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Working with a second and three. From the gun, it's Allen. Looking for his man on the out route, and he's got Diggs. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. To the air, Allen. Over the middle, complete. That's Cook. And the Bills are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. But they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Allen. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Josh Allen taking it in from four yards out. And the Bills have taken the lead here in this third quarter. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And that gives him a three-point lead. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Bengals getting set to go. 
So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. On second down, here's Mixon. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. 77 yards rushing here for Mixon. He's got a first down. Now Burrow. Short throw underneath to Hurst. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred the defense. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory at the 47. Again, it's Mixon. And he'll work down inside the 45. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Well, there were about 70,000 that were quickly calling for that flag. It comes out there for pass interference. And what do you think, partner? A little sarcasm in that cheering from this crowd here tonight. Well, they're hoping now to build a little momentum off of it and give them a more genuine reason to cheer down the road. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said, of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back. Touchdown! Joe Burrow with a touchdown connection to Tyler Boyd. And the Bengals have answered back with a third-quarter touchdown of their own to retake the lead. McPherson now for the extra point. He missed one earlier, remember, but this time he gets it to go. So that drives seven plays in length. And it's finished off by the touchdown from Tyler Boyd. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. McKenzie will not return this, and it will be brought out to the 25. Back now on offense, the Buffalo Bills. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. On second and nine, Allen. Give him a loss of six yards, and it brings up third down. Tall task ahead of him here, needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And Davis with it left side. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. It'll be a pickup of 14, but they're still a little bit short as it brings up fourth. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Here's Sam Martin now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Uh, 
Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Cincinnati set to take over once again. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. He will find his man Chase complete. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 23 yards on the play. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. A handoff to Mixon. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, pulled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw him through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. The offense on third down tonight, they're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. Here it's third and three, and he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. They're able to convert with a gain of four. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. Mixon with a first down carry. And a very determined run there as he'll take this all the way down to the 27. Good effort. 131 yards rushing for him now as his big night continues. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. An ideal spot here to get a first down and try to run some more clock, and this is second and less than a yard. Here's a give to Mixon, and he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Here's Burrow. He'll drop this one down to mix it. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. It's rare that a man his size can't at least push forward for a yard, but they stopped him there for nothing. You're talking about Tiny? <laughs> you're talking about the little guy back tiny. there? That monster. Yeah, you're exactly right. And it takes a... And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. Hayden Hurst from three yards out. And the Bengals get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. This is why a lot of play callers love play action in this spot. You just want to freeze the linebackers just for a second. Then you've got a chance to get a quick pass into your tight end right behind them for a touchdown. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And that pushes the lead up to 11. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. McKenzie will not return this, and it will be brought out to the 25. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And yeah, the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. 
On first down, they'll start out with Singletary. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. Now this one to his tight end out on the right side. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. On play action, Allen. Blitz coming, and down he goes. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack. night for that offensive line and it's only getting rougher five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far it feels like the witching hour out here doesn't it okay stupid question what's the witching witching hour yeah the witching hour that's when everything goes haywire late at night so possession goes over here on the punt and the Bengals will take over here first and ten Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Burrow looking to pass. That's the tight end, Hurst, with it. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Now a pause for the injury, and that is, yes, Joe Mixon clearly in some discomfort following that last play. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now it's Burrow. Short throw underneath to Hurst. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. Now P. Ryan. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. First down, here's Burrow. Short throw underneath to Hurst. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. And let's face it, you could put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. And he'll go down at the 28. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Six yards, the pickup, and that's a first down. Here's P. Ryan. And all the way down inside the five to the four. The pickup goes for 13 and sets him up first and goal. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to, 
says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips. He's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Hayden Hurst, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Bengals have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. And McPherson on for the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it ends with a Bengals score. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. McKenzie will not return this, and it'll be brought out to the 25. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, They've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Throwing again on second down. Allen. Give him three on the screen. He couldn't break three, and it's third down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Now Allen. And that will be incomplete. Now the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Bills drive stalls out on fourth down, and the Bengals are going to get it back in terrific field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. Tackle made there by Matt Milano. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. On second and nine, Burrow. Short throw underneath to Hurst. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. That was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. On third down, Mixon, and this won't do it. He needed six. He only got halfway there. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. McPherson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So the starting field position was terrific following the surprising turnover on downs, but the end result, only three points. Simply stated, I think you have to look at that as a missed opportunity. McKenzie will not return this, and it'll be brought out to the 25. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. Well, probably not much that they can do at this point, CD. Down three scores late in the fourth quarter. This is going to be a little too much to overcome, you would think. Yeah, they'll go down swinging, but in the end, 
I think we saw the writing on the wall a while back because one team was clearly better than the other in this one. And while it didn't quite reach blowout status, I think we knew who was going to win this one well before we got to this stage. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Now Allen. Oh, that's into double coverage and intercepted. Picked up by Jesse Bates. And the Bengals are going to take possession of the football. Well, it wasn't always pretty, but the interception there, that means that they should get out of here with a victory. Yeah, this is not a game that they're going to preserve for posterity on defense, but they did finish it off, didn't they? They did make the winning play to close things out. The touchdown, Bengals! Jamar Chase, 49 yards. And the Bengals have opened up a four-touchdown lead here in the fourth. It's no good. He missed it wide to the left. Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. McKenzie will not return this, and it'll be brought out to the 25. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit down that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Here's Allen on first and 10. Buying time to his left. And he wisely will throw that one away. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Forced out to his left. And he'll just get rid of it. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him. And after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's gonna have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. the catch now whistles and a timeout called here not sure of the point of this but they'll stop it with four seconds to go in the game so the big play means just like that they'll operate from the red zone now on first down one final shot they'll look to throw finding Knox there complete and they've got this down to about the 12 yard line Well, the lopsided affair finally coming to an end and really no shortage of big plays for us to examine partner on offense or on defense for this team they were so well rounded in this one they certainly were and how about the day those defenders had though how many takeaways did they have i quit counting after a while they were clearly the better team and their defensive effort it led the way